My name is Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. I'm from uh, Belarus. I'm representative of Democratic Belarus. And uh, here I came today to on meeting with the uh, Foreign Affairs Council on the invitation of High Commissioner Joseph Barrell. My task was to tell ministers about Belarus to update information to uh, <clears throat> Uh, explain how uh, European Union or Europe can be helpful to our situation. So, uh, first of all, I have to say that since uh, 2020, when Belarusian people uprised against dictatorship and fraudulent elections in Belarus, uh, the situation is rather difficult. For two years, uh, people are experiencing a huge human rights attack. Uh, people live in atmosphere of tyranny and terror in Belarus every day. Uh, new people are being detained in Belarus. Uh, only in October, 300 people have been detained for the anti-regime or anti-war position. Totally, in Belarus at the moment, more than 1,400 political prisoners, and the number is uh, increasing. So, uh, when the war in Ukraine has started, uh, unexpectedly for us, uh, Belarus became uh, co-laborant in this war. Uh, but I urge uh, all the democratic countries to distinguish be between Belarusian regime and Belarusian people. Because Belarusian regime uh, uh, with uh, Lukashenko in chair uh, has become um, accomplice uh, to Putin in this war. He gave our land, our infrastructure for using to Russian troops to invade Ukraine. Uh, Lukashenko uh, has to pay debts at the moment to Putin because Putin supported him back in 2020 and uh, um, uh, helped him to stay in power uh, at that moment. So uh, now uh, Lukashenko is fully involved in this war and he has to bear the full responsibility for uh, this uh, war crimes. Uh, but Belarusian people are resistant to, the, to this war. About 86% uh, of Belarusians are opposing uh, to involvement of Belarusian troops uh, to this war and we are trying to help Ukrainians as much as we can. As I said, despite of uh, the fear uh, and tyranny and terror in Belarus, despite of everyday repressions, uh, Belarusians, uh, partisans and cyber partisans are working every day to help Ukraine. When the war has started, about 80 acts of sabotage took place on railways to slow down Russian equipment going to Ukraine. Now when uh, more Russian troops are coming to Belarus and nobody knows what they are preparing for, uh, but our uh, people on the ground, our spies, our uh, like partisans uh, are watching closely about uh, w w where they move, what they are doing and send this information directly to the uh, Ukrainian army. Uh, also, our uh, hundreds of Belarusian men are fighting in Ukraine on the side uh, of Ukrainians. They are uh, defending Ukrainian land and uh, simultaneously defending Belarus. Because uh, it's our uh, also obligation as neighboring country to be with Ukraine, because we understand that the fate of Ukraine and fate of Belarus are intertwined. And without free Ukraine, there will be no free Belarus. But simultaneously, without free, uh, Belarus can't be free Ukraine. So that's why we are asking our Mm, uh, democratic partners to demand withdrawal of Russian troops not only from Ukraine but also uh, from Belarus. So we uh, think that two sided approach is necessary at the moment for Belarus. On the one hand to um, create multiple points of pressure on the regime, economic pressure, political pressure to deprive regime of resources. But on the other hand, uh, civil society, people of Belarus who are defending our independence, who are fighting against this regime, uh, we need ass assistance from uh, European Union countries because it's difficult to uh, fight alone against uh, uh, 28 years regime in our country. So we are asking to support our media, we are asking to support our human rights defending centers, our uh, different initiatives, cultural programs. Uh, I would pay more attention to a sphere of culture because for many, many years uh, Lukashenko's regime deprived our country of uh, uh, national identity. Now, uh, Belarusian books are forbidden in Belarus. Uh, Belarusian language can't be spoken. Belarusian schools are closed, and we have to, uh, like, reborn our national identity. That's why we. Uh, 
asking our our allies, you know, to uh, hold uh, uh, different. Um, uh, to have exhibitions, to invite uh, artists, uh, writers, poets, and so on, you know, to rediscover uh, Belarus, uh, you know, in, on their on their um, European map, and also we are asking for more political support of democratic forces. Uh, recently, we installed, we launched a contact group in the Council of Europe, where uh, Council of Europe doesn't work anymore with the pro-regime Belarus, but is but uh, working with democratic politicians and democratic civil society. It's unprecedented thing, and we want uh, uh, this uh, this approach to rep duplicate to other international organizations. And of course, I'm asking. Uh, people all over the world not to um, like get tired of uh, the problems in our region in Ukraine and Belarus because our countries want to develop uh, democratically we want to uh, the same freedom um, and the rule of law as uh, you enjoy and I think it's very important uh, for you to stand with us at this difficult moment and to uh, make your small input uh, as you can. So I ask ordinary people to write letters to political prisoners, to support families uh, of political prisoners, to support Belarusians who had to flee Belarus because of the war or because of the regime or had to flee Ukraine because of the war. And I am grateful to every mention of uh, Belarus in your social network, and I am grateful to media that you are holding attention to our course. Thank you.